Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the sixth Neuroinspired Computational Elements Workshop. I'm Murado Kanda, and I'm a member of the organizing committee. And um, I'd like to start the workshop with a thanks to our host, Intel, who's providing this venue for us and have been doing all the local arrangements and, and uh, uh, provided further support uh, for, for this event. So, um, in addition, I'd also like to thank the, thank the organizing committee and the program committees and our colleagues, uh, Kirsten Hatch and Dave Flory, who have been helping with the local arrangements and, and the website. To give you a quick overview of the workshop series, um, I'd like to start with the convergence that we've been observing in neuroscience, computational theory, algorithms, microelectronics, and applications. This is by no means something new. Actually, if you look back at the very early origins of computing, uh, the first draft report on the electronic computer by John von Neumann had items of neuroscience neurons delays in networks to instantiate the first stored program uh, architecture computers. And this is really interesting, and that's actually really what's been picking up over the last five, six years that we've been seeing uh, the, the tools that we have and the great success that we've been having with uh, machine learning and other approaches have put even further emphasis on, on this convergence. And we believe we're in a paradigm shift in computing where we're seeing the, the move beyond the stored uh, program architecture, the von Neumann Turing architecture. And that's, you're going to see some really exciting talks during the next three days on these specific topics, but not just focused on neuroscience or just focused on microelectronics. It's really been the connection among all those fields that, that's, that's been very exciting for us to see and, and, and observe and, and leverage on. So what, what we've been seeing along, uh, along those lines is actually two broad application areas with, with that technology. Uh, first is neuroscience and medicine, actually using these tools to understand how the neural systems, our, our brains, work uh, in, in more detail and use that for, for further benefit. The other application area that's also very exciting is using those tools and, and uh, capabilities in building new prediction, control, uh, and, and data analysis systems that we just can't do efficiently with our uh, conventional computing approaches. And there are really three directions that, that this has taken. There's one in software, there's one in software plus accelerators, sort of modified hardware, but still the, the standard computing architectures. And there are new platforms uh, that are emerging that are non-von Neumann, non-Turing architectures that are, that are really exciting. So just stepping back, taking a little bit larger view of where are we headed? What are we really using these systems for? Um, so I'd like to point out a thread uh, that, that, again, we've, we've seen this in previous workshops. What we do with our tools, how we use them, really defines our future. It is defining our future, and it's accelerating. If you look at uh, a little bit further in history, H.G. E. Wells talking about a world brain, uh, his thought was around cataloging all the world's information, having it in one place, and using that to making the best, the, the optimum decisions possible. What Arthur C. Clarke further built upon that was an electronic brain, world brain, where you have two phases to it. There is first one, which is initial cataloging of all the information, and he pr predicted that would be done by around 2000. And then world brain, where now AI starts building new, new information, new knowledge by building on top of that. And we actually, that's probably accelerated quite a bit since, since his early, earlier prediction. Adding a more recent point to that thread, um, Sandy Pentland at, at MIT has been uh, talking about a uh, human AI network where we actually, each individual, uh, we're doing a sampling function and then making our decisions based on the knowledge that's available to us. And again, that's accelerating even further with the technology and with, with the tools we have at our hand. And, and that really is very quickly changing how we, um, how we behave, how we evaluate what, what's around us. So um, just to wrap up, 
the, the, the incredible tools that are available to us, incredible knowledge that's available to us in neuroscience applications and, and theory and algorithms, microelectronics, we're, we're putting them together even at a faster pace. Uh, there has been great success in machine learning and, and some of the other areas that, that have uh, brought even further attention to these kinds of approaches. But there are still large challenges to be, uh, to be solved. And uh, the, the question that we're answering at this workshop, we're trying to answer at this workshop, is how do we use these uh, tools to address those problems uh, in, in computing, uh, in, the, in the new uh, computing systems? So the real question is actually, what are we really going to use it for? And this is something I've used in the past. I'll, I'll repeat it again. <laughs> it will be used for entertainment. <laughs> This is actually a, uh, a, a line from uh, Feynman's second nanotechnology talk, and he was using this actually for nanotechnology, saying, well, whatever we do, we're first going to start playing with it and then kind of go on from there. Uh, so, uh, and that, that, that actually e applies equally well to uh, new computing systems and, and, AI as well, and AI as well. So just to bring it to the more current science fiction and, and sort of the entertainment venues, uh, for the Westworld fans out there, uh, Arnold's looking for Dr. Ford. If, if he's in the audience, we should, we should actually connect them. So with that, I'd like to uh, thank you all again for, for coming.